Hey folks, welcome to West Texas. Hot, arid, on the edge of the Chihuahua Desert. Hey, it works for me. So this is my camper solar system installation. This was actually completed about five years ago. But since then, I've made some drastic improvements to it. This right here is, was probably the hardest part of the whole project. And that I had to find a perfectly, perfectly sized panel to fit on as little a space as I had on top of the roof. And I had to do that without it being shaded by like the AC, by these little guys, by all the little doodads that are up on top of this roof. But I finally found these Top Point 175s. And I don't even know if Top Point exists anymore. Watch those warranty boys. But they were the perfect selection for this roof. I was able to get 10 of these guys, which is 1,750 watts, and they fit really nice. I can manipulate them up or down because I have the strings sitting up on top of Unistride. So in this case, all I have to do is screw these two knuckles together and they're flat to the roof or go get my longer bars if it's winter time and increase the angle. So obviously when I go out on the road, these guys are all flat to the roof. The whole operation takes maybe 15 minutes to put down, 15 minutes to get back up again. I could do it myself though, it's pretty simple. But these guys will supply me with the, you know, between 10 and 13,000 watts a day without much effort. So this is a camper, it's not an RV. RVs are taller, allowing more storage space. This puppy has limited, very limited storage space. And that's part of uh, what this video is about, how I found places to put this stuff. So the second part of the project was where I was going to put the electronics. And I knew I didn't want the electronics inside, even though it would have been more conducive to their life, being cooler inside, you know. But I didn't want the noise. So ultimately, I chose this selection right here. It's on the north side of the camper. Great advantage because the solar panels are angled towards the south, which means this is on the opposite side of the sun. Uh, this used to be just flat, and it used to house the water pump, the water spigot, and the slide-out motor. What I did is I purchased this little door on eBay, and I, I selected this location because I noticed there was a little cutout, you know. It gave me about 10, 11 inches of space that I could fit some equipment in there, which was just enough. Uh, the Midnight Classic 150, that fits in there easy. Uh, the inverter is a bit larger, but it still fits in there nice. And again, both of these guys have been working for almost five years you'd think it'd get really really hot in here I mean right now outside it's about 102 degrees but not so much again because it's on the north side and also I have this fan system operative where we have cooler air from underneath the RV being sucked into this little uh, little uh, cubby hole and then these fans right here they're pushing it out so for example right now uh, it's pretty warm it's 41 degrees celsius but it's not so hot obviously that it's going to cause damage to the 
electronics again they've been operative for like five years and it's always that hot down here so that worked out pretty well not a problem then the third piece of the operation was what I was gonna do with my batteries and I had a fantastic idea in that I would build this box and I put a lot of time into it a lot of effort into it I wanted to make it look as pretty as possible I needed to be as large as possible to maintain as many batteries as possible because I wanted energy independence so it came up pretty nice and this guy used to house uh, 12 6 volt 205 amp hour batteries those golf cup batteries and they fit in there nice and snug I had fans in there they didn't overheat it worked but then I realized the first time I had to move the camper that adding over a thousand pounds of tongue weight with this box and batteries I would have to buy a I don't know I'd have to buy some massive truck in order to be able to move it around because what it did to my van I have a 250 van which is pretty heavy duty I try to I put that on the ball of my van and my whole rear just went down I wasn't going anywhere I mean it ball the underside of the ball was literally touching the ground so eventually I had to call in a friend of mine and he came over with his 350 with a heavy suspension we put it up on his ball and we made the journey 60 miles well, the whole time his his big old truck was like popping wheelies down the highway oh it's so so dangerous it was so bad his rear end was like six to six inches off the ground his front end again was like popping wheelies but eventually we made it and as soon as i as soon as i uh, got to my destination i realized i had to find a solution to this this was not going to cut it so a solution was necessary so then I started looking around and saying okay so where can I stick 12 6 volt batteries lead acid batteries no less originally thought about putting them behind the couch originally thought about putting them there putting them there I looked everywhere and it just wasn't gonna work and then I had an epiphany I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss these lead acid batteries because there's no place I can put them inside and I have to have the batteries inside. So, ultimately what I did is I realized that there is somewhat some storage space in this camper and it happens to be underneath my damn bed. So this is where I placed them. This is six uh, lithium batteries made by Zooms. Uh, each one is 12 volts and 200 amps. They cost about 700 and a quarter. And they performed magnificent for me in the five, six months they've been part of the system. I didn't have high expectations when I first got them off of Amazon, I took, I took the first one off and put it through thorough testing, draining it, seeing how many amps it consumed, you know, and they were legit. They are legit. It worked for me. So this is now, uh, these are three strings of uh, two batteries in each string making 24 volts and 200 amps. So this is a 24 volt, 600 amp hour at the 20 hour rate battery bank. And I sleep on it. And I don't have any reservations about it. I did originally, but then I thought, well, Elon Musk, all of his car customers, they're sitting on more power than this, I think anyway. And they don't have any reservations. Even the few cars of his that have blown up, well, they didn't have reservations until that thing blew up <laughs> but uh, I mean I'll admit that when I first installed these things 
I was underneath this area every day for like two or three weeks. And I was feeling all the wires, making sure they weren't getting too warm. Um, the wire that I have feeding them from the front is, a, is slightly small. It's 2 slash O. That's the thickest wire that I could work with. And um, that's, you know, it should actually be thicker. You know, you're not supposed to install the battery so far for the inverter or even the charge controller. But it's worked out pretty well. And on top of that, because it's sitting in the bedroom, it's not going to get too hot and it's not going to get too cold. It's going to stay at a pretty normal temperature, which resolves any kind of environmental uh, conditions that would cause damage to the battery. All right, so that's important too. But these puppies allow me to run my AC all night long. And I could run my central AC, that hog, for a substantial part of the day as well. I just need to allow enough time for the batteries to charge back up again. You know, luckily for me, I am privileged here in West Texas in that we get sunlight every single day. It's very infrequent that we have clouds. It doesn't rain here. It hasn't, it's rained once in, in like nine months here. It's just terrible. Very bad season. But uh, I think everybody's complaining about that in the Midwest. Um, anyway, right now, I can run my ACs and keep as cool as I want at night and have as much power that I need during the day. And then once AC season stops, I'll have too much power. I wouldn't know what to do with it. I could go on a road trip probably for close to a week with little sun and be able to deal with it because we have this much stored power. So it's a really cool setup. I'm very happy with the outcome. I'm very company. I'm very comfortable. I'm ecstatic to be energy independent. And there's a lot of people that uh, flag me down when I'm out in the room. They see all the panels up top. They ask me to see the system. And I show it to them with pride. Anyway, let me know what you think, if anything at all. And peace. Take care of yourselves.